Welcome back. This is Nation to Nation. A week ago, Liberal Member of Parliament Robert Falcon Ouellette rose in the House of Commons and gave a speech in Cree. Kimi opima, chi ho nao, kita aski nao, kimi ko nao. His colleagues couldn't understand him. That's because there are no translation services for Indigenous languages in the House. Since that story aired, Statistics Canada released figures on language. Those that can speak an Indigenous language now exceed those who consider one to be their mother tongue. To talk more about the issue, I'm joined by Robert Falcon Ouellette. Welcome to the show. Merci. Now, you've learned uh, Cree as a second language yourself. Now, Statistics Canada suggests that more people are listening, speaking a language, than saying it's their mother tongue. Are people trying to relearn one? Can languages survive as a second language rather than a mother tongue? Well, I think we're actually right now at a critical point with the Indigenous languages. I think there's probably only three languages that will probably survive in a, with a critical mass of enough people uh, in, for the, in 20 years. Uh, most, I think most Indigenous languages are at that point now uh, where there are just not enough people who speak it. And I think even the stats uh, don't tell the entire story. For instance, uh, people may have taken a course in university, they might have uh, you know, taken a couple lessons, uh, and they might know a few words. But often they don't have an ability to actually even carry out a conversation, a bet even a, a short conversation in, in the language. And so I think we're, we're certain, um, you know, sometimes I hear the stats that, that you know, but I, I, I even question those stats because I think for a lot of Indigenous people, when you get the Stats Canada census, they'll check off that box that they speak the language because there's a certain amount of pride in, 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 in being able to check off that box, even though I suspect a lot do not speak the language very well. But isn't that how it's going to be revitalized? It's this way it has to be a second language first uh, before you can pass it on and it becomes a mother tongue again. Well, for me, I think what, what I'm trying to do in the House of Commons is get translation services in the House, so like they do have in the Senate right now for the Inuit and the Tuktitut uh, language, uh, because if we can uh, have translation in the House, then we have to come together as Indigenous peoples, for instance, the Cree or the Ishnabe, and we have to sit there and decide amongst ourselves what terms are we going to be using in Parliament? How does it become not a language that, uh, that, uh, that is kind of becoming more of a uh, you know, heritage language, but an actual language that is living itself daily uh, in the things that we occur in, in daily life. For instance, what happens in Parliament, because we debate issues on, on, on cannabis legislation, we debate issues on, on drunk driving, uh, on impairment issues, criminal issues, the budget bills. And if we can have these, these terminologies, and if people at home could turn on CPAC, and there's a Cree channel in CPAC, Wow, you know, maybe they can turn that on today and listen to it. I know APTN does have some language programming, but it's just simply not enough for people to actually see it and hear it constantly in their daily lives in order then to say, oh, maybe it's important that I use it as well at home. Of course, we're talking about Korea, Ojibwe, and Nuktitut. Um, very concerning are those smaller languages. For example, Stats Canada yeah. said Gwich'in, for example, had declined by 43% over the past decade. What can be done about these smaller languages? Well, uh, right now what I'm really attempting to do is get, I'm trying to start with Cree in the House of Commons to start that path. There, you know, we get one done. And then what the requirements, for instance, in the House of Commons is they need in, uh, people who are qualified. So people who have enough, uh, who have some professional certification that they can do interpretation and the translation uh, in the House to a very high professional international standard, like at the United Nations or in, in uh, across Canada here. And then once we've done uh, the Cree, then it'll make it easier for other Indigenous languages if they have enough critical mass of, of people who actually speak it and who are willing to become translators, interpreters, then to take that path. We spend $1.5 billion every year on, on Parliament. I'm certain that we could hire a few interpreters and a few translators and to offer uh, some minor uh, services, and it's not going to disrupt this, this huge Canadian state. But without state help, these languages will not be here. And I think this is what we're seeing in, in uh, many of the communities. When I was traveling last February, I went to 41 First Nation communities in January and February, walking across the prairies from Saskatchewan and into Manitoba. And in many of the communities, a lot of the people do not speak the language. It used to be communities uh, that would have uh, perhaps 100% of the speakers, you know, 50 years ago, and today they're down to 23%. Uh, that story uh, I did a week ago, it really touched a nerve. I uh, got a huge number of shares on Facebook. Um, 
do you think governments, including your own government, have underestimated how important this issue is to Indigenous people? Well, I know, um, I know it's important to myself. Um, I know it's also important to the Prime Minister because I've made him aware that, it, that it's important and, and the Minister Melanie Jolie. So I was very proud when the Prime Minister last December on, in 2016 was at the Assembly of, Man uh, Assembly of First Nations at their uh, annual uh, Christmas meeting here in, in Ottawa made the announcement that there would be an official Languages Act uh, for Indigenous languages. Now, I've been pushing that it be very comprehensive and inclusive and that we governments have to offer translation services uh, where it's appropriate, like maybe much like they do for English and, and, and French across this country. Um, so I'm very happy with what the government's doing, you know, but I want to push them harder on this. And I think people need to contact the government and Melanie Jolie and, you know, advocate you know, in a gentle way, that this is important to them. Because if governments don't know it's important, they're, they're going to do something else. Uh, from what you said, do you think governments right now have done enough so that... Uh, well, not done the, enough, the, but the, I think we're getting started. Well, the, getting started, they've, they've started enough that the, our next census, or maybe 10 years from now, uh, indigenous languages won't have deteriorated anymore. Well, I don't want to see deterioration. I think uh, what we need to do is see growth in the amount of speakers and people who can actually carry out a conversation. Uh, I have recently, I just hired an elder in, in my office. I believe I'm the very first MP to hire a, an Indigenous elder. Uh, his name is Winston Watney. And, you know, he speaks Cree. He's helping me out, to, you know, teaching me more and more words. Uh, but we were just in downtown Winnipeg, and, you know, there was a gentleman who came by, and Winston was speaking Cree. And the gentleman said, oh, I understand, I, but I just, I can't speak it. He was, there was a, there was a blockage. Maybe he, he felt embarrassed. I, I'm not sure. But... It, it, was a, it was an interesting uh, moment where, uh, where I kind of, you know, you think about, wow, what's, how do I take that individual who understands the language and get them to actually try and use it every day, to every day to use it with their children, to use it with their grandchildren, to use it in elementary schools and to use it in, in daycares, to set up our own uh, care systems where, uh, where it is the only language. Because I see in the French system how they do it in minority situations, for instance, the Francophones, the Métis in, in Manitoba, and uh, they spend uh, an awful lot of effort signing contracts with parents that you will speak French at home, mm -hmm. and this is the language you will use at home. And if you are a non-French uh, speaker in one of these households, you, you're going to take, you, you know, you give that, you give your assurance that you're going to take lessons and be somewhat become somewhat proficient in that language. Now, I guess, uh, finally, and this is kind of the apocalyptic question, uh, nothing's done, there's further deterioration, and even Cree and Ojibwe one day are yeah. in danger of disappearing. They uh, will disappear. If we don't do anything happens? probably within the next five years, these languages, it, it, we're in a period right now where we really have to make a decision. Uh, the Assembly of First Nations talks about how important it is. Uh, most people talk about how important language is to their self-identity. But if we don't do anything now, probably within five years, we're going to hit a, a, a point where we can't go back, where we won't have a critical mass of enough people, even in Cree or Ishnabe, um, The Inuit language, I think, will probably be able to survive because of some of the isolation they exist within, but it, uh, uh, you know, in northern communities. But I think it's going to get to a point where it's going to be too hard to go back because you need an, a certain amount of people using the language in daily life where they can um, cross-pollinate, so where they can uh, work together, where they can use this language every day. And if you don't have enough people, uh, eventually it just becomes, well, you know, I just speak English. Because you start, you know, you start marrying out outside the group, you get more people who don't speak the language, and then the households start changing over into English households. Well, hopefully it does get to that <laughs> point and something can be done in the next five years. Thank you for oh, spending yeah. the time to talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you.